All right, welcome to the Couch Live here on rock100diz.com. This is the YouTube segment portion of the show. And of course, I am the street certified dope doctor, Louis Delgado, your host. And this segment is sponsored by dlmsuccess.usana.com. My co host, Denise McLean Solis. There you are, girl. How you doing? Doing good. Doing good. The original Backstreet Mom. Hey, you have your, your book in here today, so I can do this real quick. Backstreet Mom, if you plug, haven't picked plug. it up. You can pick it up. It's backwards, I know. You see that? Yeah. Isn't that crazy the backwards. way this camera this camera does Backstreet does that. Mom, you can get it on starbeamcoaching.com. That's right. How, how come she get, she brings her book and doesn't even give us one for to have in the studio? Hey, I got one. I oh, you got, got, one. got one. I thought I already and, gave you one. And, of course, oh. this guy. Oh, I'm sorry. This, if you don't recognize him, I'm I don't know where you've been. But this is the great Pinklin Thomas. Pinklin Thomas was, is, the ex-champion, two-time, two-time heavyweight champion of the world. That's right. That's right. And I better say it right because he can whip my butt. So I better say it right. And of course, <laughs> Captain Chris Hill, can you get your head in here, Captain? He likes to show his mug. Every oh, yeah, that's the Oh, there oh we go. and he put it right in your mouth. You there see that, right? You, you see that. <laughs> Louis, I could whip your butt. Okay? Oh, so that's oh, 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 oh. See, I ain't got to do nothing, man. You see how she, it got, is? she got my back. She got my back. Thanks, Hold me back. Hold me back. <laughs> anyway. Um, so it's great to have Pinklin Thomas in here. He's in here because he has a great story of inspiration. Uh, in recovery yourself, right? How many years in recovery? Uh, 22 will be February the 10th. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's a, a great deal of time in recovery himself. Had used since a little kid. Since what yeah. age you using? Yeah, eight years old. Eight I'm years old. Oh my goodness. Nine, I was snorting, mixed job, and quinine, heroin. Um, Whatever's clever. And huh? I did it all. I shot... <laughs> Shot drugs for long for about ten years, okay. and uh, I did a little bit of, uh, but but through it all, you know, only through the grace of God that I'm here today. And recovery, treatment taught me how to uh, live again, and that's what's important. It ain't where I've been; it's where I'm going. That's right. That's right. Now tell us a little bit about the recovery. I mean, what what did it finally do to you? You were saying earlier in the in the previous segment the story about Angelo Dundee. And, and I want to make sure you reiterate that because that is a good story. And he was very inspirational to you and a very, he still is a very uh, strong part of your life and your recovery, correct? Angelo is my buddy. I talk to him maybe two or three times a week. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we was inducted uh, last year in the Florida Hall of Fame together. Mm -hmm. And um, he, uh, <coughs> we, as I said, we talk all the time. And La Angelo was a guy who inspired uh, was the or when I hit my bottom, mm -hmm. I was down in Miami. It was in uh, after the Holyfield fight, I think mm -hmm. '88, and uh, I went out real bad. And that week, I was on a bench. I was messing with that cocaine. I went from free basin to, mm -hmm. to crack, and uh, just went out real bad. I was supposed to do a, a color commentary show with him and uh, smoke through the night, smoke through the next day, and uh, finally uh, fall out. I go I find myself home and I wake up with a phone call and. It's his secretary calling me, telling me, asking me where I've been, and you know, you know, you missed the show, and Angelo is really mad at you, and get your butt over here right now and slam the phone down. Mm. Oh Lord, I've been asleep for a day and a half, and I look like I got a beard, my hair coming to a peak, and uh, I lost about 13 pounds, and I'm, I'm, I'm just dehydrated. Mm. And, I look in my closet, I jump up, and I look in the mirror, and I see this ugly person with bags under their eyes, and I go in there, and I try to grab a shirt, a tie, a suit, I try, I jump in the shower, I clean up, I go to shave, I shave, but man, I'm just wrecked, I'm a wreck. I find the smallest suit I had, and, I, and my belt was at the last notch, and it looked like a hop set. Mm. But anyway, I had to go. I was uh, off of 95 down in Miami. He was in a bank building, and I walked into the building, and they used to recognize me, and they would say, hey, champ, how you doing all this time? This time nobody said anything. Oh, I, and I was walking in with my head down. They were all just going like, to say Ooh. nothing. Ooh. So, so I jump on the elevator. I go to the second floor, and I get off, and Betty hit me in my face like, Pink, where have you been? And what? Look at you. You look so bad. And uh, Angelo never looked up. He was just, you know, continually doing what he do. And uh, I was telling her to Betty, I got a problem, but, you know, I deal with it. You know, when I was a teenager, I had a problem with Aaron, but I kicked it. I'll kick this, too. And she's saying, Pink, you really need some help. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, no, I deal with it, you know. And then Angelo, he never looked up. He just said, uh, Betty, go downstairs, get a safe deposit box key, open up the door, open it up, give him everything. 
He just he didn't look up. He just said, "Pink, I don't want to have nothing else to do with you. Forget my name, my number. Forget you ever knew me." And wow. uh, Betty yeah. just walking down to the car. That's it. She walked me down, gave me a kiss on the jaw, and said, "Pink, please go get some help." And I left. I had twenty thousand dollars in the uh, safe deposit box. I took two thousand. I put it in my pocket. Yeah. I put other. I went to another bank and put eight thousand, eighteen thousand in there. Mm -hmm. And um, at that time, I went home and I, man, I, I, I was, I, I, I called a treatment centers. I called three treatment centers in Detroit, and all of them were full. Mm. And finally, I called the last one was East World Treatment Center in Royal Oak, and uh, they told me. And and I was under an alias name, which I told them oh, okay. my name was Tom West. All right, so and they didn't, didn't even know. I didn't want to tell them I was Pink or Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long story short, you know. Um, I was in, I went to treatment. I had to stay clean for three days. Mm -hmm. I stayed clean for three days. That third day was my birthday. Okay. And um, then I had to, uh, well, after, the, after that third day, uh, went to, flew to Michigan. Uh, and after I went to Michigan, went to treatment. Uh, did 21 days. Uh, after that week, uh, I had to get real, I had to get honest, I had to do what the program said because I was telling a lie. Mm. I told them that, you know, my name is Tom West. Yeah. The guys was hunching me. Boy, boy, say, I, I know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> man, that's pink one. I know that, I know that guy. I know that I know guy. That face. Yeah. And I'm saying, Especially man, since you're in Michigan. Yeah, I'm saying, man, <laughs> you don't know me, man. My name is Tom West. Get away. <laughs> Leave me alone, you know. And finally, you know, after about, you know, about, about a week went by, you mm. know, I had to get honest, and, and I did. I told him, you know, that my name is Pink on Tom, some point we were just, hey, I told you, I wow. thought they jumped up. I told you that was him, you know. But anyway, um, uh, recovery, uh, after that I learned a lot that was because I was, you know, susceptible to uh, comprehend and, yeah. and absorb. And um, from that day, you know, I just... My choice of drugs, of course, is heroin and cocaine and mm -hmm. what have you, you know, and of course alcohol. Mm -hmm. And I haven't touched, you know, touched anything of that nature. I've been smoking cigarettes. <laughs> and I haven't touched any of that, you know, at all, period. And that's wow. my way of life. I just live, uh, try to live the life. You and you know? live real healthy. So I've, I've worked with uh, youth, juveniles, um, don't want to say who, when, where, exactly. or how, but uh, numbers of kids, girls and boys, mm -hmm. you know, I've helped them, um, I've helped their families, I've helped uh, uh, adults, uh, uh, some very distinguished people, you know, um, and because of my recovery, because of my strength, because of the way I carry myself, you know, uh, a lot of them have confided in me, you yeah. know, and still confide today, and uh, that's how I end up em emulating my program, Project Pink. Mm -hmm. which is Pride Neighborhood Kids, and then I trained the other guys, the older guys, as mentors to help me with the kids, and uh, so they can implement their skills and styles mm -hmm. to them also. And you're a mentor, and you're a mentor too, you mm -hmm. know, because we're all doing the right thing, and that's what they need to hear. They need to have another outlet, some place to go, and, and where they can express themselves, release their energy, that's right. and, uh, you know, just learn a different way of life. Well, it's a great story of recovery that you have, and a, and a great inspiration. Just like Denise, you're used to that, you know. Yeah, I mean, kind of using your own personal story to inspire others. Yeah, and his story is not unsimilar to my son's story with mm -hmm. with with Kevin coming to him and find and he missed he missed a a couple of things, a couple of uh, appointments and and uh, promotional events while they were on tour, mm -hmm. and I was out on tour with him for like I don't know three or four weeks, and I had to go back because I had stuff going on at home. I had ill parents. I had so much going on. On top, my mother was really like on her deathbed at that point, so mm -hmm. I was dealing with that long distance, and then had to go back home. And during that time, when I went back home, my son really went down the tubes. He even had a therapist on the road with him, trying to help him, and he was really not into it. And when he missed this deal that they were supposed to do, and it had to do with kids, I think it was like a, a little baseball game or something they were doing mm -hmm. with some kids. Mm -hmm. Kevin was done at that point, and he went to his hotel room, and he said. You know, you're basically what he said was, "You're dead to me." You know, you're dead to me. I'm, I'm done with you. I can't deal with this anymore. You're not the person that I known all these years. Because these, you know, five guys known each other since they were kids. Yeah. So at that point, that's when my son called me and he said to me, he said, "I want to come home." And I said, "No, I don't think you should come home. I want to come home and go into treatment." I said, "No, I think you should just go to treatment." 
and that's exactly what the therapist right. said. Don't right. come home because you can change your mind. You Just go. Home. Because of something like that, you know, because of Kevin and because of Angelo Dundee and because of the work you guys put into it and the work you put into it, Pinklin, you're here today inspiring others to stay sober. Anyway, thank you to the great Pinklin Thomas. Go to thedopedoctor.com, starbeamcoaching.com. We'll be back on the couch live right after this.